Okay, this is Dr. Krause with another uh, inverse kinematics video trying to support uh, my students on their project for our summer robotics class. Now, one of the things we've talked about a lot is that you can often find a theta one in inverse kinematics from a robot by drawing a top view that involves either the tip or the wrist. Um, and that works really, really well and is very, very straightforward as long as the plane that contains the tip or the wrist that you're working with also passes through the origin. Uh, but things get a little weird or slightly more complicated if I have some kind of an offset. So I'm drawing this, I'm pretty sure, from a Denovit Hartenberg perspective, we would call that a D2. So what do I do if the plane that contains the tip or the wrist that I'm trying to find is actually rotating in something that's parallel to, but offset from my origin. So what's going to happen is if I rotated this, so theta one was non-zero, and if I knew my p-tip coordinates, I'd end up with this picture, d2 going this way, some other radius going that way. And if I just took the inverse tangent of p-tip x, p-tip y, what I would actually be finding is this angle that I'm going to call beta. So beta is arctan 2 of p tip y comma p tip x. But beta is not equal to theta. Now it might be fairly close depending on the ratio between d2 and either this distance or this distance. Um, the closer d2 is to that radius, the bigger problem you have. Um, what I want to say, so I can find beta pretty easily. I should also be able to find this radius really, really easily, this distance. Um, so again, if I drew a P tip X, P tip Y rectangle, then R squared is P tip Y squared, P tip X squared. Those are the sides of a right triangle. Very, very straightforward. So I can find that R. If I can find R and I know D2, then I can easily find this offset psi. So I think it's fairly straightforward that the sine of psi is D2 over R. So I could find psi based on inverse sine, or if I wanted to, I could then also make some expression for the cosine. Uh, the easiest way to do that would be to say that the cosine of psi is the square root of one minus the sine squared of psi, which sort of feels like cheating, but I promise you kind of isn't. Um, and then once I know psi, so at that point I could say psi is the arctan two of sine psi comma cosine psi. Uh, once I know psi, I think it's fairly obvious that psi plus theta one is equal to beta. So the true theta one that I'm looking for is beta minus psi. And it's that correction, that psi correction, that I feel like some of my students are missing that is throwing off their inverse kinematics analysis just a little bit. And one way to see that is after you've solved for all of your inverse kinematics stuff, you go back through and plug it into your forward kinematics DH model. And if that model includes D2, your forward kinematics trying to recalculate your known p-tip will be off by at least a little bit, again, depending on the ratio of d2 to r. Thanks. Let me know if you have questions.